A state space model is a linear representation of a dynamic system in either continuous or discrete form. So I'll write the continuous form first. And you have the A matrix, the B matrix. Okay, and then you have a C and a D matrix, matrix as well. And let me just talk about the dimensions for this. So X is going to be a real vector of length n and u is going to be a real numbered vector of length m and we have y is going to be a real vector of length p. So these are the dimensions of our individual vectors and this is the input vector, this is the state vector and this is the output Okay, a list of numbers that are going to be the outputs. And we have these matrices, A, B, C, and D. And this one, uh, the A matrix, is going to be an N by N matrix. The B matrix is going to be an N by M. And the C is going to be a P by N. And the D matrix will be a P by M matrix. Now, the D matrix is typically just equal to uh, zeros. And often the C matrix is just one of the states, or sometimes it's just the identity matrix, okay, if you have all of the states being measured. So most of the most of the information that we, when we derive these, is typically in the A and B matrix, and these are just the output equations. So let's talk about um, some of the things that we can derive from these. So first of all, we can look at stability, and we can just take the eigenvalues of the A matrix and see if the system is going to be stable or not. And it's going to be stable if all of the eigenvalues have real components that are negative. So we have the real components of the eigenvalues. If they're less than zero, then we're going to be stable. But if any of them are greater than zero um, or equal to zero, then uh, you know, if it's equal to zero, then it's an integrating system, and if it's greater than zero, then it'll be unstable. Okay, so let's just do an example. Now let's do a simple example with uh, just a first-order system. So let's say we have a differential equation that looks like this. This is a common description of many dynamic systems with a gain and a time constant. So this is our gain, and that's our time constant. And just putting this into state space form, we would just rearrange this and create a state x. So we'd have x dot, or that's dx dt, equals, and then I'll go ahead and divide through the tau p value, times x plus kp over tau p times u, and then just create my output, which is y equals x. So this original equation right here in state space form becomes two equations, and then my A matrix is just going to be one by one, and it's going to be minus one over tau p. My B matrix is going to be kp over tau p, C equals 1, and D equals 0. Okay, so here is my state space representation of that system. Let's do this for a second order system as well. So let's say we had this original equation that we uh, just discussed, tau p, but now I'm going to have a second one as well, so I'll do tau p1 equals minus x1 plus kp times u. 
And then I'll have a second one. Okay, so just two equations. This is a second order system. And then we'll have our output as well. This is just going to be our second state. So if I divide through by tau p1 and tau p2, and then just rearrange this, I'm going to put this into the state space form, where I'd have x1 dot and x2 dot. Those are the derivatives with respect to time. And then here is my A matrix. And that's going to be minus 1 over tau p1. And then I'll have a 0 here because I don't have x2 in my first equation. And I'll write this in matrix form. And then I'll also have 1 over tau p2 and minus 1 over tau p1, or tau p2 there. Okay, so we have, uh, there's our A matrix, and then our B matrix is going to be KP over tau P1, and then a zero there because we don't have U in our second equation. Okay, and let me go ahead and just, there's my Y equals, and then I have my C matrix, and that's multiplied by X1 and X2. So this one's just Y equals X2 plus zero times u. Okay, so here's a, b, c, and d matrices. So I've put this one into this uh, state space form. Okay, let's talk about just general nonlinear systems. So let's say you have dx dt equals f of x and u and then y equals g of x and we want to translate this into state space form so if this is general nonlinear then we need to linearize it so we're going to linearize the right hand side of this and that's going to be approximately equal to and if we choose steady state conditions then our nominal values will give us zero derivative that will be equal to zero and then you need to take the derivative with respect to x, plug in the nominal values, and then you can do x minus x bar. x bar is the nominal value. And then you'll also have df du, plug in the nominal values again, and then this will be u minus u bar. So this right here will just be a number and I'll call that alpha and this will just be a number I'll call that beta and then we also want to linearize uh, this one okay so that's going to be g of plugging in the nominal values plus and then we'll take the derivative of g with respect to x and plug in the nominal value there. Okay, and I'll call this one right here, I could call that gamma, for example. Okay, so in state space form then, it would come up with something like this, where we would have alpha times x I'll call that x prime for deviation variable. Okay, I'm in deviation variable form plus beta times u prime. And then I'll have y equals gamma times x prime. So this would be my A matrix. This would be my B matrix. And that would be my C matrix. I've translated any general nonlinear system into state space form. And if you have additional states there, you can just take the partial derivative with respect to those states or those additional inputs. Okay, so just some additional content on this. If you just come to apmonitor.com, this is listed under the Process Dynamics and Control course. And if you go down to 
assignment. You'll see an assignment on this as well, but also some additional material on state space models. The information that we just uh, showed here on state space models, and then a number of examples as well. Okay, so here's the general nonlinear system for state space. As I mentioned, you just take the derivative with respect to each variable and then put it into this matrix form. And then here are a few exercises as well. You have um, one through four here. Here's the first one, just putting this one into state space form. And then it gradually gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, here's the final one. If you'd like to see the solutions, just select this. There's another video there, and it will show you the solutions with some source code in Python. Okay, and then finally you have the, this is going to be the next um, exercise that we'll do. This is a state space stirred reactor, and you need to derive the state space model and then simulate it.